Canada, a country worth fighting for. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. The National Post has an article out titled Remembrance Day should serve as a reminder that Canada is a country worth fighting for. Now, I agree with that. And it's interesting to think about what fighting for means. On one hand, you can think about military type fighting, signing up, going to war for your country. I do believe Canada is a country that deserves that. It's done a lot for a lot of people. But on the other hand, there is a different type of fighting. And this might be more relevant to the current political landscape within Canada. Fighting back against policies and ideas that are contrary to the fundamental notions that Canada was built upon, such as freedom and being able to express yourself. Things like this. Fighting back against ideas that are detrimental to Canada in all its glory. This isn't a call to arms, it's simply a call to engage in debate. A call to fight intellectually for the premises and the grounds on which upon Canada, one of the best countries to ever exist in the world, was founded on. Now the article has a quote here. They say the fact that we are having a national conversation about how to lower and raise the flag less than a week before Remembrance Day is a vivid sign that Canada's sense of both country and memory is flagging. And I do think that's quite accurate. Now we should talk about why the flags have been down for this long. It's a response to the tragedies and the horrors that were discovered this year in regard to things like residential schools. Now everyone knew there was trouble going on there, but digging up the bodies of the children, that was a newer revelation that came out recently. And of course, it was shocking, horrible, disgusting. To honor the victims, the flags were lowered, which I agreed with. Lowering the flag is a sign of respect for an action or an activity or an occurrence that the country is collectively mourning over, like when soldiers are killed, or something akin to that. That was fine. Trudeau took things in a strange direction, though, where he made this an indefinite move. The flags were lowered with no clear idea of when they would be raised again. Now, at the time, he probably thought this was some type of theatrical move he could pull to get some public goodwill. But you have to ask yourself, is that really what was achieved here? Or did he simply cheapen the notion? Did he cheapen the respect that comes with that? If the flag is lowered for many months, these things become dull. They become ordinary. They lose the meaning behind them. Further, they're not really solutions in and of themselves. At a certain point, it became very clear to me that the current liberal government was using it as simply a virtue signaling mechanism. What was the good that was coming out of this? People didn't even know the flags were still lowered. You do it, and you return to normal. Keeping this indefinite state of flag lowering really is nonsensical. And I did agree with Aaron O'Toole when he was saying the time has come to raise them again. And further, now my opinion, these tragedies are horrible. You have to do something more than just lower the flag if you're going to do anything at all. This is just some type of theatrics, some spectacle to quell the common critic. Look at Trudeau's record in terms of what he's actually doing here to solve the problem or address it. Lowering the flag is not that. To the rational observer, obviously the time had come to raise these things again so they can once again be lowered for events like Remembrance Day. And it's not like when Remembrance Day comes around, the flags are indefinitely lowered again. They are risen after. So they can be lowered again to show respect for the next thing that deserves it. Now at the end of the day, truly you can put forward an argument saying it's just a piece of material, a piece of fabric. Why are people getting so hung up on it? Really, it goes back to what that quote was saying about a sense of country. Is that really all the flag means to you? The symbol of the nation that you inhabit? A piece of fabric? This is one of the many problems that we're encountering today. What is this shared sense of country that the residents of Canada hold? 
It's very difficult to identify that, and it's problematic. A functional society is tied together by cultural and societal norms, a shared vision for how this geographic terrain should operate. If we don't even have a shared respect for the thing that symbolizes the unity of our nation, what's that going to do to things like our public discourse and the ways in which we view each other? When you look at the outgrowths of things like political polarization, citizens regarding people with contrary viewpoints as demons and people to be vanquished, it all ties back to this, having a poor societal foundation. Not having a shared vision, not having a shared respect for fundamentals, and perhaps even different memories and ideas of what the past means. In relation to that, the article goes on to say that reckoning is one form of remembrance. An important form, but not the only one. Reverence is also part of memory. Reckoning without reverence makes reconciliation difficult. Leaving recrimination and revenge as options for dealing with the wounds of memory. Remembrance Day, a day of reference, reminds us that there is more to Canada's story than shadows. This is another lesson that I feel like we have to heed as a society. There is no country ever to have existed and is currently existing today that doesn't have its fair share of shadows. One can put forward an argument that Canada is a failure only if you're comparing it to a utopian imaginary vision. Canada is, as I've said, one of the best countries to ever have existed. It's a country that millions of people from around the world wish they could inhabit. For all of the wrong that I would not argue with when put forward, there is a plethora of good that is often swept under the rug. And when evaluating Canada based on its merit, going back to the question, is it a country worth fighting for? You have to look at everything. You have to conduct a holistic analysis, and in my mind, after doing that, there is no doubt that Canada is a country worth fighting for. It's a country that we should be proud of. It's a country that has some work to do, but you have to tie in as the quote says, notions of reverence in your analysis or you end up looking like some type of ignoramus that can't appreciate that 99.999% of all humans who have ever existed would have killed to be in your current position if you are in fact a Canadian resident. That's how things are. Regrettably, I've seen many contexts in which people are advocating for the destruction of these Western countries based on fantasies and ideas of certain types of societies that are perfect and that's not the case it's not an idea that's based in reality canada is something of a miracle honestly this is not the norm it should not be confused humans have never had something as spectacular as a country like canada these are rare look back throughout all of human history and the various civilizations that were erected and to be talking about destroying things at the seams or taking away pillars on which the foundations of such a country was established on, you should do that very carefully, where you risk not only your peril, but the peril of your fellow countrymen. And not being able to identify these shared strands of what it means to be fellow countrymen is accelerating that process. I really do wonder if we conducted a national poll, how many people would be in agreement that something like the freedom of expression that's guaranteed to us is something that should always be respected. That would be something of a fundamental pillar on which a country and its folk can rally around. I'm sure there'd be a lot of polarization there, and I do ask you to point out to me a shared strand, a shared foundation, a shared notion, philosophy, whatever, that is not polarized in today's day and age. What is something that we can all rally around? We need it, but I'm not too sure we have it right now. The article then goes on to write that the shared memories of a people are in large part what constitutes them as a people. No memory, no identity, no shared story, no nation. 
And once again, I do think that is also, for the most part, true. Now, I will caveat that by saying that Canada is a relatively new country, especially compared to many of the other ones around the world, but still. What is this shared story? What is the fabric behind which the narrative of this nation is resting upon? Now, some shared stories that are floating around there are, on one hand, something like Canada is a form of nation that embraces the immigrant story, that we put aside our differences to build together a spectacular country that we all contribute to and that we all live in. Despite some of the problems of our past, we're moving towards a more progressive, egalitarian, great society. And you can argue that we are very much in an advanced space than we were in many decades ago. That some of the complaints that we're hearing today are more hyperbole than anything. And on the other hand, you have other stories that are becoming very popular that tell the tale of Canada being some type of oppressive regime. A regime that is so steeped in horror that it cannot be redeemed. That it's irrevocable. That it has to be destroyed at these seams and rebuilt. These are not compatible. And when they're both gaining prevalence, both of these narratives, there's going to be a clash there. Now it is up to you to figure out what type of story you think best aligns with the reality of the current state. And maybe it is a mix of both. It's not one or the other. I would be open to something like that. But the fundamental fact here is that we don't even have that shared story. And not having it makes it hard to run a cohesive nation. In fact, you become more and more tribal by breaking these things down. And, once again, that's a current theme in politics that we're seeing today. Breaking things down. Balkanizing. And encouraging people to identify more and more selectively with their in-group. And not with the outer group, the broader trend of a nation. To identify yourself and to make very important things like your gender who you want to sleep with, the pigmentation of your skin. Things that, for the most part, you had nothing to do with. They're arbitrary facts of birth. But we're elevating them beyond things that we do have a choice in, like a shared idea for a country, like a shared story. Like saying that these arbitrary differences cannot be the things that we define ourselves based on. We are Canadian, and that means something. We seem to have forsaken that. Now then, the article closes off with a note of remembrance for Remembrance Day. It says that Canada is a noble country and those who died wearing her uniform merit our memory and our honor. For sure. 100%. Canada is a noble country. And we do try our best. And the people who have died for these shared ideals that perhaps we once held, they have to be honored and remembered. Then the article closes by saying that we cannot honor these heroes properly if we dishonor the country they fought and died for. And once again, I do agree with that. Canada is a noble country, and I will argue with anyone about this. The shadows that we talked about do not take away from the holistic analysis here. To dishonor the country that many men and women have regarded as something worth fighting and dying for dishonors their vision as well. And we know that's not based in reality. The facts point towards a free nation. A nation that is exemplifying some of the best values that we've seen manifest in any society. One of the best civilizations that we've seen erupt throughout the entire span of human history. Many of these people have died not fighting a war for Canada directly, but fighting for people who have wanted a sense of the freedoms that Canada holds so dear, to liberate people. The Canadians who died in World War I and World War II, for example, weren't directly doing this because Canada was under threat. It was humanity that was under threat. It was places in the world that were not holding true to what Canada would call virtues. These shared fabrics of a nation, what it means to be a Canadian, was certainly not being mirrored in places like Nazi Germany. So, people went in to solve that problem. But now when you look in the mirror, what do you see as a Canadian? Is there a vision to be proud of? Is there something that inspires you? Is there something that you feel connects you to your fellow countrymen? That's what we have to ask ourselves, and that's the problem of the modern 
Western world. It has to be sorted out if we hope to achieve any type of cohesion going forward. So with that, it now brings us to the end of our conversation for today. If you enjoy the content, be sure to leave a review and share. That will help us grow. And you can find me online at periplatform.org and on social media at periplatform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.